Okay, hey everyone, Keegan here from Curious Engineering doing part five of the Altera University program, specifically the Digital Logic um, Lab Number One uh, series. So this lab, let's uh, let's take a look at it. It's a it's a pretty good lab. It'll introduce uh, two new concepts. We're gonna introduce instantiation, uh, which is just uh, the Verilog word for functions and calling functions. Uh, if you've had experience with other programming languages, as well as um, a new uh, um, I guess you call it like a new, we'll call it a net, that's exactly what it's called, it's called a net, but it's going to be essentially a wire and how we're going to use wires to connect up different hardware elements. Uh, before we get started, so this is the Whirlpool Galaxy, it's M51 Alpha, and it's a pretty cool picture that was taken from the Hubble Telescope, and it is uh, showing not only one galaxy, but a separate galaxy interacting with it. Uh, pretty cool, um, I always like to have these uh, images as backgrounds, kind of like things. It's a cool reminder of scale. As you can see, there's other galaxies down here, and it's pretty wild to think about the billions of stars that are in this galaxy and the, the potential for billions of different galaxies. So, a uh, pretty insane sense of scale. But um, anyways, let's jump into part five. So, part five, it is asking us to implement um, a truth table. So this is the truth table that we're going to ultimately implement and then we're going to use uh, three different elements to do that. We're going to use multiplexers, we're going to use our seven segment decoder that we created in lab four or part four and ultimately what we want is to have three different hex characters and then we'll toggle switches nine and eight to create this rotating uh, values of those characters. So uh, this is ultimately what we want to do and this, uh, as I mentioned, since it's introducing two new kind of uh, concepts, uh, wires as well as uh, instantiation of different uh, elements, they've given you some uh, some code to kind of like build off of, and uh, showing you kind of like how you instantiate different things. So uh, I'm gonna kind of like modify this quite a bit because what we've done in the past is we've directly connect uh, our switches and uh, our hexes to these to these um, hardware elements and I want to go away from that because uh, we're going to use uh, variables or we're going to create uh, different wires t to accomplish this uh, for, to set us up for success um, later on down the road so awesome so I'm going to bring up a PowerPoint presentation hopefully to help kind of like streamline this uh, as you can see what we're going to call uh, switches 9 and 10, we're going to create a wire from those switches and we're going to call that uh, channel select. So that's going to be what our MUX uh, selector is going to accomplish and that will create our uh, rotating um, rotating uh, you know, characters on these uh, hexes. And then switch 5 and 4, uh, we're calling that channel 2. That's going to be our, uh, we're going to make that zero zero so we're not going to change it but that's going to represent the D letter. Channel 1 is switches 3 and 2 that's going to represent our E capital E letter and switch uh, 1 0 that's going to represent our number 1. Um, and again so these are the elements that we're going to use. Well, just a reminder for your seven segment display at least on the DE1 SOC board uh, it's common cathode so that means uh, when we drive things high, that'll actually turn off each segment. So, just uh, if you have a different board, make sure to check your board and uh, uh, understand if it's common cathode or common um, anode. Okay, so let's uh, let's start creating the project, and then we'll jump into some of the other things later. So, let's uh, create our new project here. Uh, let's call this. I'm going to create a its own folder. So I already did this one, so I'm just going to delete it and create a new one. Lab one, part five. Okay, and we're gonna name it Lab one, part five. Empty project. Not gonna add any files. Let's add our target, our board of interest, the whole chip name, MA five F thirty one C six. That is our DE one SOC. Not going to use any sort of uh, evaluation tools. All right, let's finish. Okay, uh, let it process. We are going to add a source file. We want to add a Verilog HDL file. Okay, and I've completed the code for this, but I'm going to walk through certain elements of it. Okay, um, 
let's uh, before we jump that let's make sure to do our pin assignments obviously if you you can go one by one to do this but let's do it the the fast way and I'll remind everyone we did this I think in um, video number two part two or part three one of those but I'll walk through it again just uh, as a good reminder so we want to use our TCL console as, as if you don't have it again go to view utility windows TCL console and then I'm entering all these things and it's doing all the pin assignments for us so super efficient um, again if if you're unsure of how I did this let's go back to um, let's just go all the way back to the start so let's go to altera.com you want to go to support go over to university program under training select boards um, you can select whichever one you have I have this board and you'll see this uh, dot qsf file so you click on that then you can see all the things you need to copy and paste um, for all the elements that you're creating so I am going to use the hexes for example so you copy and paste those and then paste them in your TCL console so a uh, quick easy way to do it as opposed to the long arduous way of doing it the other way oh sorry pull that back up is to go to uh, Teresic. Um specifically we want to go to the resources of our board and you can download their uh, CD-ROM uh, within that that has the system builder tool which uh, you can uh, quickly generate your QSF file so download that and um, look for the system builder tool so or it looks like I'm not sure if you can just download this one in particular but either way it's gonna download that QSF file for you and a uh, good way of you know when, once you have one built just kind of like say hey I'm gonna s use all the hexes uh, the switches and the LEDs just kind of save quick ones for yourself and it'll be helpful in the future so um, cool that you can copy and paste and, and go from so let's look let's delve into the code a little bit here um, delve into the code. let's save our file obviously before we progress, so we've done our, we've pasted our code, we've done our assignments. Uh, we could compile. Let me compile it, and then I'll talk about something else. So I've created a high-level schematic just to help guide us here. So um, here's the whole thing. It's kind of big, so I'm going to focus in on uh, exactly what's happening here. So as we saw in this drawing, we need to use pretty much two different uh, hardware structures. We're going to use mu mu uh, multiplexers as well as a seven segment decoder that we've built before. And we'll do it, we'll need to in, uh, use three sets of each. So we we'll need three different multiplexers and three different decoders. Um, one for each uh, hex. So that's what you see here. Um, for example, for hex number zero, hex zero, we're going to use a multiplexer, we're going to use our decoder, and we need to connect everything. So that's where we're going to use this wire type. So um, it's good practice to have everything exterior that's actual hardware, our switches and our hexes, uh, connect those um, to everything in our actual uh, program with uh, wires, so this wire type. So um, I'll explain a little bit here, but as you can see, uh, our switches 5 and 4 are channel 2. Or what I'm what I'm calling channel two, switches three and two are channel one, switches one and zero are channel zero, and we've said uh, our toggling switches are going to be channel select, and those go to each select of the multiplexer, and then we're going to change. As you can see, I've I've used colors here to kind of like uh, help you see what's going on, but as you can see, the way we're connecting to each multiplexer, our inputs, we're switching those up based on. Uh, um, that that's exactly how we could accomplish uh, this truth table, and you know varying what's going to be output on your hexes. So cool. Um, and then our seven segment decoder use the exact same one that you uh, created in your previous uh, part four. Um, again, that decoder is specifically built to output only that the the lowercase d, the uppercase e the one and then nothing so um, if you want to create other characters for example you have to re-decode everything uh, which is a pain in the butt so that's why you want to if you spend the time doing it once uh, make sure you just instantiate it or call that function again and then you don't have to do that so that's the power of instantiation so let's maybe talk a little bit about um, 
as a you know wires. So this is a new uh, way to connect between your different hardware elements. As as you can see, it's uh, it's literally just the name is exactly what it is. It's a wire. So if you had a wire connected to a five volt source uh, in real life, obviously that wire is going to be carrying that five volt uh, value. If it's connected to ground, for example, it's going to be zero volts. So um, that's exactly what this is uh, doing for us in, in code. So so what are we doing? So we're saying hey create this uh, two bit wide um, channel select channel two channel one channel zero uh, again another two bit you know that we're gonna say hey this is our output wire from our muxes that's what you can see here and then um, we're also creating at the very end and I don't have an image of it um, output wires to each of our our hexes um, so that's a seven bit for the seven segment um, seven wires that are gonna connect it and then this is how you actually just assign them. So you're saying, hey, make sure our switches nine and eight; those are our toggling our inputs for our mux. Uh, assign the switch values to that uh, wire. That's how you connect it. Uh, that's essentially connecting them here. And then uh, same for channel two, one, and zero. Make sure you have all your switches correctly uh, lined up to each uh, channel. So that's what you can see here. Okay, now let's go into instantiation. So what is happening when you instantiate something? So let's look at the code here. Okay, so what you do is you have your top level module and then within that you're going to create three different multiplexers so that's you you say one two three that's what we're doing here these lines here we're saying hey create those three multiplexers and then I'm gonna call those functions and the way I'm doing that is um, by mirroring uh, the the actual function or the the module that I've created and then I'm gonna create three additional seven segment this decoders um, and then I'll talk a little bit about how we're connecting everything so um, the, the way you structure it is you call your top level and then after that you define what those uh, modules, the MUX module is, and you define what your seven segment decoder is, um, which is what you see below here. This is our MUX module and our dec uh, display module, our uh, decoder. And then let me talk about what's happening there. So when you create a MUX, for example, so this is what uh, it physically looks like, or this is what it, like the block, di block level diagram looks like. So we're saying when you call the mux uh, module, you call it exactly as it's written. So we've the mux module. We said it's mux uh, two bit uh, three to one, you know, three to three input to one output. So after you call the function, you give it a, just an identifier. So I I usually like to use m for mux, and then you say zero, and then for the next one you say m one, uh, and then m two, which is what you see here. M zero, m one, m two. Cool. So now it's uh, hooking everything up uh, correctly. So you just uh, all all of our wires. We just need to correctly line them up when you call your MUX function, and that's how that was what will create the connection uh, physically in the hardware. So obviously our our uh, channel select we want that to uh, be our S as we see here. Um, channel zero uh, we're gonna say that one we want that to be our U input. Channel two is our V input channel 1 is our W um, here and then our output obviously we want that to be our output wire uh, make sure that's in the last location there so it's just exactly that just mirroring uh, what wires you have and feeding them into the correct uh, locations for each uh, module so these uh, these values here are just placeholders essentially these will represent what's the physical um, uh, physical mux is actually doing um, but what you feed into it is what is going to be um, connected so as you can see here uh, for the zeroth bit uh, we're saying you know if it's if the select is zero zero make sure that's your u which is correct if it's zero zero uh, here this will be our u input uh, if it's zero one that's going to be our v if it's one zero that's our w or one one which you can't see because my head is blocking it um, but that will just be uh, one one. Awesome, and the the output will be uh, based on whichever one is being selected. So um, the key to this lab is changing how you know what these U, V, and W inputs are. So 
I'll go into that um, right now. Alright, so I actually cut away to kind of like change how I'm trying to explain this uh, so it's hopefully uh, hopefully clear. Um, so what I want to do here is just kind of like show you that um, the key to this is how you multiplex different things. So if you look at that truth table that they gave us, you can actually isolate each column into each hex. Uh, that's a really important realization to make. And then based on that, uh, we remember that we, you know, for our uh, switches 1 and 0, that's going to be channel 0, and that's going to represent our 1. Um, so we are doing that with uh, 1, 0, and then again, same thing for E, channel 1 is on our switches 3 and 2, and then D is going to be on switches 5 and 4. And just make sure you put in these uh, values, which I'll demonstrate uh, live in, in the example once we upload this code to our board. So again, so you just have to match up, you just use this as your guide. So 1 is going to be channel 0. D is, oh, let me turn this on. 1 is channel 0, D, red, is channel 2, and then E is channel 1. So you see, see you just, for each uh, multiplex, uh, or multiplexer, you just make sure you follow this table. So again, blue, green, red, 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 blue, green, red, blue, green. Perfect. So if we line everything up like that, then um, We've multiplexed correctly, and we should uh, see exactly what we need to. Um, so, as I mentioned, we've let this run. No errors. Fantastic. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, program our board. So let's, actually, before we do that, I'm going to show one cool thing. So um, I'm not sure I've showed you this. So if you go into Analysis and Synthesis, we're going to see what the uh, and you go under Netlist Viewer here. Let's look at the RTL Viewer. So let's see like what this will look like or what the uh, um, compiler has interpreted our code as. Um, so we see it exactly how we needed to, right? We see our three multiplexers, our three decoders, um, our switch inputs, and our LED outputs and hex outputs. So that's perfect. That's mirroring what we're kind of uh, uh, demonstrating our schematic here. So three multiplexers, three decoders, and three hexes. Fantastic. OK, so let's upload this to our board. Come to this program board, uh, auto detect it, choose the uh, correct device to target. Um, in my case, this is the SO, uh, DE1 SOC. We're going to add a file. We're going to add our output file, our SOF file. That's compiled, um, uh, you know, everything that's compiled and ready to go. So we're going to make sure it's just the one that we want there. And then we hit start. Okay, so it is on our board. I'm going to explain what uh, you're seeing here. So uh, let me pull up this because I already filmed this. This will be my guide. Okay, so obviously you need to set your switches. So go ahead and switch. We don't need to select anything for switches 5 and 4. We're going to select uh, 0, 1 for switch 3 and 2. And then we're going to select 1, 0. Uh, for switch 1 and 0, so that will give us our DE1. And then if we toggle switch um, switch 8, that gives us our uh, our next input of our truth table, which is ED1, E1D. Sorry. And then if we toggle switch 9 and switch 8 is 0, that gives us our 1DE. So that's perfectly matching our truth table and showing that we uh, have implemented everything correctly. Um, awesome. So again, this is a longer one. Sorry, guys, it was a, a long video, but it did have some concepts I really want to go through. And hopefully, I hope clear some of those things up. And if not, then uh, please let me know, and I'd love to uh, try and explain it better. So um, anyways, I uh, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Take care.